if you've got one of these and you've also got one of these, then what do you think we could do with it? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. Make yourself comfy. Tonight we're going to do a little experiment with my phone and the International Space Station. Massive thanks to all my patrons. With great appreciation to all my patrons, including new patrons Warren J, Cheese Mondo, Mr. Bozo Head, Brian A. Reed, Thomas B, Sven Arn Grimson, Andy Woods, Glenn Chapman, and Dark Sabre, and my latest patron, Chris Holmes. Thank you all so very, very much. There are several websites that enable you to state your location and then get predictions for the passing of satellites and other celestial objects. I've been on the lookout for a particular opportunity and that finally came up last night. The ISS was predicted to pass over my location on the 27th of March 1940 reaching a magnitude of minus 3.8 which is pretty much its maximum ever starting only 10 degrees above the horizon in the west and setting 20 degrees above the horizon in the east a passing that was nearly six minutes long this was one i couldn't miss and the weather was perfect on the heavens above site if i clicked on the actual entry in that table it brings up a chart showing you the path that the ISS or other satellite is going to take. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees just to make things clearer. Now this is a much better representation as the ISS will be starting just a few degrees above the horizon and going vertical. But what's this? Just by chance tonight the predicted path for the ISS is going to pass just to the right of the moon and then just to the left of Venus perfect markers to enable us to spot the ISS. So we're all set. Now we have a date, we have an exact time and we have a location that the ISS should appear. And I've got a Samsung Galaxy S9. We're going to film it. We're going to show that that ISS will appear exactly where and when it was supposed to. And it will show you that anybody could do exactly the same. So there is no denying, nobody can deny that that object is up there. Let's have a look. Well, it's the 27th of March, 7 p.m. You might just be able to hear the clock going. Well, it's just stopped, the village clock. Um, that's the moon, and directly above it is Venus. Um, it's, as I said, it's seven o'clock now, and in about 38 minutes, the ISS is going to rise, uh, and it's going to be going virtually vertical past the moon and past Venus. Now this is just using an ordinary Galaxy phone. We're going to try with my daughter's camera as well uh, to capture the ISS. It should uh, basically pass in an arc, a vertical arc directly overhead, turns around and then down that way somewhere. So perhaps I better try and get a different position so there's no tree. Be interesting. Well it's 7.23 now. My daughter's here. Well, you can barely see. My daughter's here doing a test with her camera and we've got the moon just there and Venus just above. We've now got about 16 and a half minutes until the ISS comes up. Well, we just popped in for a few minutes to stay warm and uh, I just pull, thought I'd pull up some tracking of where the ISS is right now and it's currently... Uh, mid-Atlantic, uh, heading over. Here's our terminator line. We're just into early evening here. So ISS currently is in daylight over the Atlantic and it'll soon be passing the terminator line and across the southern UK and on to Europe. So uh, it's quite exciting to see where it is right now. And as it says, its orbital speed right now is 4.764 miles per second, which is 1,700, 151 miles at an altitude 261 miles. And the current time is 1935 
UTC. It should appear for us at 1940 and a few seconds, so not long. Okay, it's 19.40, 20 seconds, so I've got about 14 seconds until the ISS should come up. There's only a few stars, which I don't think I'm going to pick up on the camera. And my camera's actually having problems focusing now, I think. But it should be in the next few seconds, it'll be right down at horizon level. So we're probably also not going to see it until it's a bit higher. But I'll keep an eye out for it now. Still looking out for it. So it should go vertical. I can't see it. Can you? I can, yep. Down from the moon and to the right slightly, it's going up. Oh, yes. Uh, I don't know if it's going to show up on my... There it is. I've got it on my camera as well. Oh. Yeah, uh, just approaching the moon. Got a flicker as it went past some branches. But that is the ISS going past the moon now. And it's headed up, headed up towards Venus. Fabulous. On an ordinary Samsung Galaxy phone. So all these idiot flat earthers that think it's a, a balloon or whatever, how could that have been predicted weeks in advance to within a few seconds? And it's approaching Venus now. It's getting brighter. I think it reaches maximum magnitude of minus 3.8 in a couple minutes time. But this is perfect conditions, having the moon and Venus to be markers for it. Nothing fancy. You can see it with a naked eye, see it with a phone. Oh, my autofocus, so keep screwing up because of Venus. But we've got the daughter's footage as well, so at various points I'll cut between the two. Amazing. Yeah, a phone uh, isn't really the best, the best of things for astrophotography. But I uh, thought it'd be an interesting little experiment. It's passing another star. It must be approaching maximum brightness. I'm just going to rotate. Oh. <laughs> if I don't fall over. Where are we? There we go. That's directly overhead now. So there's no flickering, there's no flashing lights. It's a steady light. That's gone through 90 degrees of the sky in about two to three minutes. It's now beyond overhead heading towards the other horizon and in a minute or two it will go into the Earth's shadow and out of sight. Doesn't look much on the camera right now because there's nothing to show the movement. Um, but soon we'll start to see the speed it's going as against the treetop as I'm getting cameras going down a bit lower. Beautiful. As I said, it's minus 3.8, which is about, I think, the, the maximum magnitude it ever gets. So it's perfect viewing conditions, not a cloud in the sky. Both the Moon and Venus to mark the uh, point where it's initially coming. That'll only be seconds now. So you can just see the treetop there. I couldn't get a better viewing position than this anyway. I've 
never seen a pass as long as that before. I've only seen, seen short ones, maybe 30 seconds, but that's a, I think about a three minute pass, something like that. And I'm guessing it's about 30 degrees above the horizon now, maybe a little less. And I'm probably going to lose it behind a tree. Well, I forget the exact um, angle it's going to dis oh there, no that's the tree it's going behind I can't really change position now it's flicking behind the tree not bad eh predicted to within a second and I even showed you where it was going to go behind that tree fantastic international space station dudes you're busted we've just come in it's only a few minutes later it's 1948 and as you can see it's already passed over most of europe absolutely astonishing the blue area is where it's in earth's shadow and it's so i think that's another slam dunk flat earthers nasa deniers and those of you who refuse to believe the ISS exists. I did my own research. You can do it. Have a look at that website, Heavens Above. Find out when the ISS is predicted to go over, and you can see it with your naked eye. You can film it with your phone, and if you've got a scope and a camera, you can do even better. The ISS and other satellites are clearly visible. Over several hundred years, there were plenty of astronomers studying the sky, noting things about planets, comets, shooting stars but not once not once did any of them ever describe what we just saw tonight i just like to say a big shout out to the shortest of the three little miss sensibles i appreciate your help last night it's great fun hope you've all enjoyed it look forward to seeing you again until next time stay sensible <laughs> Shut up and sit down.